On this week's episode, we're going to uh, get you into the grind with a barbecue gadget, and Jack has got a secret ingredient that is yellow. Or are you yellow? Might Don't be. be afraid. Grill Great starts right now. the low country of South Carolina. It is the birthplace of American barbecue. The show formerly known as Meatheads TV. We're working on a new name here, Grill Grates. Grill Grates. G-R-A-T-E-S. Grill Grates. And we'll still, we'll work on the uh, the uh, Facebook page and, and you can still subscribe to us on MeatheadsTV.com for now, but we'll now. Uh, we'll get it all together here. But uh, we did get some subscribers Excellent. to our uh, email, our feed burner e-blast. So Beer cheers tarp. to you. Cheers this to you. Allagash White, Tony uh, finally ended up and brought the beer this time, so we're drinking uh, decent beer, not Bill's cheap beer. It says beer brewed with spices. With spices. Portland, Maine. Thanks, Tony. Mm. It's a nice uh, low country afternoon here. Getting late, a little warm. It's beautiful. It's going to be pretty warm here soon. I love but it. We figure we just get right into the show here and get to your viewer mail. You ever want to send it, it's jack at Carolina, Carolina Pitmasters at gmail.com. That's right? us. And Bill at BarbecueTricks.com. Jack and Bill, I cook Boston butts a bunch. Normally, I'm done in a few hours, but last week it took me forever. Same size butt, however, it seemed to hang at one temperature for an extra hour or so. I couldn't figure it out. Will the same weight meat ever have different cook times? Or was it something that I did? Love the show. Perry in Lexington. What do you think? Perry, it's good to see you. Thanks for uh, sending in that letter. And I, there's a, a lot of different reasons why it might happen that way. Um, there's different uh, feeds, different lots, different pigs, different hogs. Everything, anything. Is could that be common different. though? That, that it could take different times. I mean, it, it is. It's fairly common, Bill. But I think what we're dealing with here is a phenomenon called the stall. I heard um, you talk about that at the class at Pitmaster. Yeah, class. the stall is something you have to deal with, especially when you're cooking a medium to large cut. Um, the stall actually happens when the meat is cooking and you're cooking it at a slow temperature, the collagen is breaking down within the meat itself. And once the collagen really starts to break down and it starts to, to melt out, it is actually acting as a cooling agent within the meat itself. So the meat is, the energy is still coming through the meat and it's still cooking, but the collagen is, is, is coming out of the cut and it's actually cooling down your thermometer. So what you're getting is a long period of time until all the collagen melts out, a time period where the thermometer is going to sit at the same temperature. A so, good, go ahead. so it always happens in, in, in some way, but maybe not as... It always happens in some way, especially when you're dealing with a fatty cut like a Boston butt. Um, a good pit master deals with the stall by allowing it to happen. Um, it's, it's a lot of times, guys, I'll tell you what I'll through. do. I'll God pick it up, and I keep that. I said, man, it's still the same thing. I'll shut it, and I'll go back five minutes later and open it up again try the temperature again and it's still not there and I bet that just increases the problem. It, it? it does. Once you open the lid up and you're losing your uh, forward uh, momentum on the cook, a lot of guys will uh, go ahead and uh, turn the temperature up on the grill thinking that something's going wrong with the, the, it must be the thermometer's problem so I'll turn the grill up and what you're actually doing at that point in time is good, going against what goes on with barbecue because you're not allowing the collagen to come out. Once your meat gets up above 212 then the cell structures start to seize up rather than open up and that makes a tough cut rather than a succulent tender cut of barbecue that you really want to have. Wait the stall. Don't rush it. Wait the stall. Work and with it. sometimes you got to give yourself enough time in case you have the stall, I guess. Yeah, you, you should allow yourself. I've had meat sit in the stall three, four hours before it comes through, especially when you're cooking a whole hog. It's something you really have to expect to have happen. Um, brisket does the same thing. Uh, pork does the same thing. Just wait the stall out. Um, as a matter of fact, some of the best pit masters I know will actually reduce the temperature of the cooker during the stall to allow all the collagen to, to, to break loose and get out of the uh, out of the meat. The collagen, the collagen is what actually makes the meat moist and tender. What's left of the collagen is what actually and makes it's gotta it get, flavorful. At hog, it's got to be or, or butts, it's got to be like 190. Right? Yeah, and 190 is your is your end temperature. That's what you're cooking towards is 190 for your finished temperature. The Give stall happened around 175. Of time. Give of yourself time. the time. Wait for the stall. Enjoy it. Uh, drink another beer, make another drink. Thanks, Perry. 
instead of opening the lid, That's open right. a beer open and a beer. relax. Um, for our hot on the market grilling gadget today, uh, I thought this was a cool little gadget. Oh, take a peeky beer. Gadget time. This is Bill's version. It's the this is the mortar and pestle. Um, the That's mortar and pestle. Hey, you got to oh, hold your beer there. You're Sorry. good. The mortar and pestle is for grinding. Um, it's for grinding spices and, and, and herbs and stuff like that together. So a lot, what a lot of guys do is they will toast their own seeds, uh, cardamom, cumin, those kind of things. You put your seeds or your salts or your whole salts into the mortar, into the mortar, and you use the pestle to go ahead and grind up your seasonings or whatever that you're making together. This is good for pastes, good for um, grinding spices, good for crushing, good for just about anything. A must-have if you're into doing rubs. That's a good, and 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 these things aren't that expensive. No. They can be. It, it, Another it version a, of this is the um, I've got a mocajete. There you go. Which is like volcanic rock you see for like guacamole a bunch, but yeah. mine is a uh, Williams Sonoma original. Uh, make sure you stop oh, really? by. Yeah, it is um, a very nice gift uh, for the Father's Day that's coming up. Uh, one never knows. Good stuff right here. We'll find some links and put them up there. As Williams well. Sonoma. All right, uh, so our website of the week this week is, I thought, uh, a pretty good one. Uh, you guys are you're involved with them, too. The Smoke Ring. Smoke Ring, good smoke stuff. SmokeRing.com, and if you've got a website about barbecue, just log on, thesmokering.com. It'll, it's basically a ring of websites, so you it can is. click through one to the other to the other to the other. And you keep on going. There's got to be 500 of them on there if there's one. Uh, to be a member of the Smoke Ring is easy as well. My friend Gary Howard uh, is the one that started the Smoke Ring. Uh, and it's a tremendous place to be able to go. They also have a great forum there, a big uh, chat forum there uh, at the Smoke Ring. And there's a lot of good barbecue information that gets uh, exchanged on that site as well. TheSmokeRing.com. All right, great our stuff. secret ingredient. Um, it's yellow is all the only clue we gave, but there's so many different variations. The ingredient this week is... Mustard. Mustard. So you could have, yellow, you know, you could have a regular old yellow mustard or... They got Dijon. What do you what's what do you tend to use the most? The uh, the mustard that I use as a adhesing agent or an adhesive agent um, is common yellow, f cheap yellow mustard. Um, I use it a lot, especially when we're using Boston butts. Uh, we'll use it with ribs. Um, you know, put a little layer on there, and it holds your rub onto the meat and allows your rub to make a little bit of a of a crust on there. Is basically what it does because there's a little oil in the in the uh, in the mustard and. It, it, it doesn't give a flavor profile or reflection as the meat cooks. Now, if you want a little bit of a flavor reflection or profile when it cooks, if you want something sweet, I would certainly recommend Grey Poupon. There's honey mustards out there. There's just a ton of different mustards you can use in the rubbing process, in the preparation process. In the sauce making contest, if you're, or in the sauce making process, if you're into making a mustard sauce, you can use any of those mustards mm -hmm. that you want. Honey mustard is a great place to start. Let me tell you, uh, mustard on its own is, is made with vinegar and oil, so it's tart to begin with. If you put the honey mustard and you start with the honey mustard to begin with, well then you don't have to sweeten it up a whole lot. It's already ready to go. I like a Dijon, Dijon in my special red sauce. Sure. So, and mustard's always, I mean, there's so many different variations. You can always cruise up and say, excuse me, sir, do you have any gray poupon? There you go. It's a good thing. Or save, <laughs> you know, I hadn't seen that much of a difference, really, in some of, like, the generics and all, too. So, yeah. uh, just get what you get what you like and experiment with I it. Agreed. Um, I agree. Cheap yellow mustard is always a good ingredient to have laying around the house anyway. If you don't have a jar of cheap yellow mustard, it's 50 cents at the store. Go pick one up. But, yeah, you use the, uh, for rubbing down a hog or a butt, right. just use the cheap stuff. Just use the cheap stuff. All you're using it for is an, is an adhesive, not a necessarily a flavor profile. All right. That's uh, it for this week. We've got some fun stuff for next week. <laughs> Doors automatically <laughs> slamming in the wind. What? Uh, where are you cooking next? <laughs> we'll be try on North Carolina, but we've been talking about this one for a while. Oh, the North yeah. Carolina State Championships are in try on. Uh, we're looking forward to that and uh, having a good time in there. Uh, I don't know when this, this will tape up, but it should be real close to try on. And after try on, we're looking at maybe going to Daytona. That'll be fun in July. Fourth of July in Daytona. Excellent. Don't forget, please, subscribe, especially the iTunes. We need people to subscribe to the iTunes channel, which is going to stay the same. And then go and rate us. Give your comments at iTunes, and we'll try and spread the word about good barbecue. There you go. And uh, that's it for this week. Hey, uh, we'll see you on the great. Hug your mom. Hug your mom. Hug your mom.